Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're going to be building a keyboard that I've been wanting to build for a minute. Um, they reached out to me and they asked me if I wanted to build it. I uh, previously built another one of their keyboards and I was like, absolutely. TKLs are one of my favorites and this one has interested me since the very beginning. Um, Real quick, I just want to apologize. I've been out of pocket for a few days. Um, between Thanksgiving holidays, um, some travel, some family showing up, I caught a bug and it just knocked me out. I was in and out here and there, but obviously I don't have a set schedule. I do know that when videos don't appear for more than a couple of days, there are a few people that, that check, in on me, check in on me, and I want to say thanks, guys. I'm all right. Anyway, today we are taking a look at the Gyrus Labs 80, a TKL that is lovely to look at, and I hope it will be lovely to build as well. Let's go ahead and jump into it and see what we've got in the box. As with their other keyboard, it does come well packaged. We have a keyboard case where we have most of our ingredients. And we also have a box here. So we can go ahead and take this big box and where does it go? So real quick, I just want to take a look at, in here we have the PCB. One is a Foxtrot PCB with flex cuts. That's a very nice PCB, and you can see that it actually has the mounting for what looks like gasket mounting right there. And there's the connector for um, the daughter board, I would assume. And it looks like it has several layouts to choose from. Looks like we've got stepped caps lock. Looks like we may have a split back space. Um, and it looks like we can do a 7U. So that should be quite interesting. Uh, we also have Quran foam. Oh, and we have an aluminum plate as well as an FR4 plate. Oh, and a PC plate. Oh, yeah. We will get to test out several different sounds of this. But here, this is the... Uh, Oh yeah, it comes nicely well packaged in some shrink wrap, but that blue and that silver, uh, that's magnetic, I believe. And um, I don't know, I just gotta say, I love the lines on this TKL. I love how it has a little LED under, under here. Um, the badge, the Iris 80, it's just a, it's a lovely looking kit. I gotta say, it's definitely a loving, lovely looking kit. So, let's go ahead and put this here. What shall we do for the first plate? Uh, I know what someone in particular would tell me to go with for the first plate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go with what I know he would say do first. We're gonna do the aluminum plate first. Of the pour on, and we've got the PCB. We will be coming back and doing these as well because I'm usually the biggest fan of PC plate, but there's certain situations that the FR4 plate, in my opinion, gives the best combination between flex and sound. But I, I'm a big fan of PC plate, so we'll have to see how well it does in here. Now, let's see what we have in this box. Looks like we're going to have all of our necessary tools and hardware. All right. Oh, there's the magnetic. Wait, oh, that's so cool. We have a um, coiled USB-A to USB-C cable. That's nylon braided. It has gyrus, iris, gyrus. I always want to say iris, gyrus labs. Um, logo embedded on the end 
and it is a nice cable and thankfully it's not an aviator. I'm just going to set that aside. Looks like we've got, oh, that's a pretty nice driver. And Okay, that's just for turning. I thought that was maybe to store something. I thought maybe the ends were stored in here, but it looks like here are the ends that we'll be needing. Oh, that looks like we have, oh, wow. It actually comes with a gold artisan key. Very cool. I had seen that in one of the photos. And I was wondering where it was from, and now I know. Alright, so here we have PC stabilizers, O-ring, foot pad, anti-shock silicone pads. Alright, so we've got a combination of feet and PCB O-rings, as well as the feet pads. Then here we have silicone gasket columns as I said for here and this looks to be a badge for here if I'm not mistaken I'll put this on the side so it looks like we will need some screw and stabilizers and thankfully I have some of those reach into my box of goodies here. Alright, so we've got I'm honestly not sure what that is. But we've got poron pads. We've got some tweezers. And we've got oh is a pretty complete kit. I had not purchased these in a while. These are the um, Run Junior X. And here we have the Poron pads in, in different sizes. Nice. As well as... Wow. Yeah, they definitely got stab wire film. All right, so put these to the side. First things first, let's open up this plastic here. Now this is one of the things that really does interest me about how this keyboard is manufactured. It has basically these two ball bearings in here on either side. They're spring-loaded and in here we basically have a little stem like a clamp, like almost like a T. So when it hits those, those ball bearings, it locks into place. I mean, that's pretty neat. I have not seen another keyboard like that. I don't know if we will either. But this is definitely my preferred way to open up a keyboard. <laughs> Let's get the stuff we don't need out of the way. Let's see about this PCB. I gotta say that is a nice looking PCB. Yeah, we've got a split left and we've got the different positions so we can definitely go with the Tasangan bottom row if we wanted to. And there we could do a split backspace. And we also have an F13, which is personally my preference. We have a reset button on the back. And we have what I'm going to assume is the connector for this, for the daughter board. So, I'm going to say first things first. Oh, oh, this thing is solid. 
This is extremely solid. And a curiosity. The base alone weighs 1,615 grams. And if we put this back on it, looking at 1915 grams roughly wow that is uh it's almost two kilograms i like that i like that a lot Let me go ahead and lock it back in place since right now we're just going to be needing the pcb so first things first we're going to need to install the stabilizers and for the first build, I'm just going to go ahead and stick with your standard uh, six and a quarter space bar. I'll come back when I do some of the other plates and do a tank and bottom row. So let's see. Need the shorter one. All right. You have cats. Cat hair gets everywhere. Probably just easier to do that <laughs> since I basically need all of them. Yep, four. Go ahead and build these out. All right, kind of surprised that my screw and stabilizers did not seem to come. Usually they're in this bag, but thankfully this kit does have the O ring, so I guess we'll be using them. And I'm going to be using these 0.2 millimeter. Pads. I believe that this is the thicker PCB. Um, I'm not sure. I know that they come in both 1.2 and 1.6, but I'm not sure if the flex cut is which one the flex cut is. So I'm just going to be taking a chance with these. But right now I do need the uh, the O-rings. Now let's see. Do we have an IX? Or, yeah, IX PE sheet in here. We do we want to lay that down first. Alright, we got something for the bottom. We do have an IXPE layer. And then we have a layer that we'll be putting on top of that. Um, I'm going to be doing all the foams for the first build. And then modifying them as I go for the different plate builds and different switches that we'll try out in here. All right, so we want to line this up as best as we can. We are going with the regulars, so let's see where that lines up. All right, so let's go ahead and do the space bar first, as I think that'll give us a good idea for the rest of them. Let's just leave this right here. So we know where we're going. All right. Now, I think you guys have seen me use this before. This is um, basically Lube 3G. Um, I will be making a video in the future on how to make your own. Um, but this is originally, as far as I know, Gazoo's uh, recipe. Um, he's the one that actually sent me these out. So here in the future, I am going to give you guys a video on how to make your own. I, in bulk, this is so much cheaper than um, than buying Crytox, in my opinion, and it performs just as well. So we're going to go ahead and just build out the stabilizer wire for the space bar and see how it goes. And this is just the way that I loop them. Doesn't mean this is the way that you have to do it. Everyone has their own ways, but this is the way that I do it. I like to make sure that I get the elbow in there. And I get just enough grease to basically coat the wire. You can have a little bit more, just you don't want it to be dripping with grease. And yes, I could use a paintbrush, but I think this is just much quicker. 
stick it in through both sides of the stabilizer and clip it into place. All right, and we'll do that for the other side. Do the elbow. Elbow is where a lot of the contact happens. Well, with the stabilizer itself, the housing. And then this is for the stem on the inside. All right. So, these will be going in. Oh, they do move independently. So, let me go ahead and put these in this. little rings and two of these little screws and in case you guys ever need more of these these are just motherboard washers um, so they'll be the same pretty much for all of them so let's go ahead and try to hold this in place we flip it over all right and then one more Looks like we've got that one on there. Ah, screw. All right. Uh, this one. Oh. Looks like we'll be going standard. Looks like the stabilizers are on, and that part of it is good to go. All right, so we've got uh, the mat, the I IXPE foam installed onto the PCB, and we've also installed the screw and stabilizers and confirmed that they work. So the next thing I would go ahead and do is I say, yeah, this actually will probably leave to last. Let's go ahead and see about this. Alright. What do we have to do? Huh. If I'm not mistaken, this is something we cut. Because that goes there. That goes there, and this is here. Right. <clears throat> and the same thing over here. Now it falls into place everywhere. Now it's a little bent there, but fix then this basically we'll have to kind of leave in place until we can sandwich everything together. We're going to go ahead with the aluminum plate for the first build. Lay it down. Just wanted to make sure that we had a fit with the stabilizers that we're using. And then we're going to go ahead and use oh, see? It fell out. But I know I've got a few keyboards that have that piece loose. And once you assemble everything, it works. All right. So for this build, I decided to go with um, pulling keys. Just started carrying the LTs, the Gazoo LTs. They're the linear thock switches. And I'd only given them a chance once in the past and um, I'd actually 
loaded them on a board that I gave to a friend, so I hadn't tried them in a while, so they sent me over a batch because now they're carrying the RGB variant. Um, the Boba Plastic isn't, uh, isn't made anymore. It still sounds the same, actually. I think it sounds actually a little bit better, but um, so that there's no discoloring. Apparently, some of the foam that's used in keyboards does off-gassing, and that's what was causing um, some of them to switch colors. Though <laughs> A lot of people seem to like the colors they've switched to. So these are the LT, and they're the 65-gram RGB variant. They actually they have like a little glass or a little plastic pane there that acts as a bit of a diffuser for the light below, though we don't have to worry but that on here. So I'm going to go ahead and use these as the switches for this build. I will be trying other switches as I try other plates. But I'm going to go ahead and install these so that we can get the plate and the PCB anchored together. Right. So we're just going to keep on going and load these up these LTs and we'll get to building it. I, this, for some reason, it feels like it's a lot less steps. I almost feel like I'm missing a step. Um, I mean, I know we have the magnetic weight and I guess we got to figure out the LEDs, although I think that's just diffuser. So that goes down into this right over the LEDs. But we will be checking that here in a minute. So let's go ahead and load these up. All right, so now that we have the core, or the PCB, and the plate, and the in-between sandwiched foam, we're gonna go ahead and add the gaskets. Now, <clears throat> a lot of the flex or stiff, a lot of the flex or stiffness that you're gonna get out of this board is going to depend on how many of these you use. So one being flexy, and three being more um, sturdy, more less flexy. So I was thinking to just go ahead and use two and be right in the middle. Since we have a choice, I think that'll do us good. So as you can see, they're the dumbbell style, so they go right into that little cutout on the PCB. And I'm just using two, so I should get a medium flex experience. I'm using two on each one of these. All right. So the PCB core is basically ready to go. Now let's set that aside for a moment. Go ahead and get the case and open it up. That's just so satisfying how it opens. I really like this design. Alright, so here we have these spots right here. And those seem to correspond to these, which would be a force break mod, which is very common in a lot of two-piece aluminum kits. So we're going to go ahead and install these into their respective spots on the top case. And again, for anyone who might not be familiar with the force break mod, it um, basically acts as a think of it as a spring or a gasket between the top and bottom half of an aluminum keyboard case because those are junctures where 
a lot of the contact is going to happen. I mean, when you're striking a key, there is a reverberation that goes throughout the entire keyboard, and that reverberation will make each of the parts of the uh, case resonate at a different frequency, and that will cause that pinging that you sometimes hear or would hear from, like say, a lot of the first Qcon Q series um, before they updated them, but they included a force break mod. They had a lot of ping. A lot of the first really um, in stock commercial um, keyboards had that same ring. So what this does, this acts as a gasket or a suspension, so to say, between those two physical halves, and it, it, deaden, it deadens the residents so that it doesn't, they don't interfere with each other or actually amplify each other and make it louder. It in all theory should just end it or at least catch it there basically absorb the sound resonance waves alright so it looks like we just got a couple of extras and so we'll set that aside alright so I think we've got everything that we need we can go ahead and lay down as for stock I usually like to just go ahead and include everything that's there and when I come back to it and try different plates um, as well as different switches and keycaps um, you can also try a foamless build I know there's a lot of requests for certain keyboards to have foamless and I know this one I'm interested to hear what it sounds like but for right now we're going stock so we're going fully foamed go ahead and flip this over Move this out of the way. And we're going to go ahead and install the daughter board. Alright, so that JST connector is a nice tight fit. So at that point, we want to flip it over. And we've only got a little bit of cable there. We want to make sure that it's folded under but not pinched. And then we can align the barbell gaskets with the grooves on the bottom of the case where they will, they will sit and then not, not too stiff but not too flexy right in the middle kind of where I like it all right now all we have is the top case One fell swoop, it came off. It locked into place. That's nice. I really love that mechanism. That's just a very cool mechanism. Let's go ahead and take the tech off the bottom and see this nice. Yeah, that is just, uh, that's lovely. That's gorgeous looking. So let's go ahead and take this and install the feet. Always good to push and hold just to make sure that the adhesive gets a nice, good adherence to the bottom of the case. Now, time to load up the keycaps. So I realized the other day I didn't have the Arctic colorway and anything but OEM. Two sets of them, but they're both OEM. And I've purchased from Sumzen, Zem GSN, S-U-M GSN. 
on Amazon. Um, they're a reseller of different products, but so far I've been happy. So I got the Arctic scent in a double shot um, PBT. No, yeah, I believe it's double shot PBT. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, double, this is a double shot PBT, well kitted out, set of Arctic in the cherry profile. I think this set is normally 28 or 29 uh, dollars, but I got it, uh, I believe, for $18.99 in one of those Black Friday flash sales. Let's see what are these keys. Alright, so we have 1.5 thickness of keycaps. Like I said, I've, I've been quite happy with the uh, sets that I've gotten from them. and I do understand they're sourcing different sets from uh, different manufacturers, but everything I've gotten from them so far has been very decent. And this has all the had I thought about this before adding the stabilizers and I knew I was going to use this set this has the seven U's it has every uh, even has the keys for uh, saying it so I could have used it but now I know when I come back to it so right now I'm going to go ahead and load it up with this double shot arctic colorway and the cherry profile and PBT plastic All right, so a quick tip here. This is connected to a JST connector right here. And if you pull hard enough, it'll come out of the JST connector, but it won't necessarily come out of the hole because it's got one of these connectors there. So when I first plugged it in, there was nothing. And I was wondering why. I'm pretty sure that's why. Because I know that I, I tugged on it a bit to get it in. So, because it... That first push is a little bit tough, but once you get it in there, it's in there. So try to do it without pulling on the actual wire on the cables. Alright, so we've got that in. Before I close everything up, I'm just going to plug it in and see what we've got. Yeah, these things are, they're a jump all over the place kind of thing. Yeah, that no, works. All right. So, um, yeah, in case that happens to you, just all you got to do is take the weight off. There goes another one. I wish there was a little bit of a hook to that so it actually could like wedge in there and lock, but can't have everything. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and lock this back into place.
So I've got to say, this is by far the heftiest um, TKL that I have. It is probably the most interesting as well. Um, it doesn't have per key RGB, though it does have um, doesn't have RGB except for those that LED effect. But it does have a cap sock indicator. And it seems to be two of them, one at the bottom, one at the top, depending on how you put it in. So, because there are some keycap sets that do have a window, um, which I like a lot, that'll actually show it through the window. But um, with regular keycap sets, you can kind of peek in there and see if it's on. So, that's one nice feature that it has. It has a solid build. Um, like I said, right now I'm going to just stay with the. Um, stock build with the aluminum plate and all the foams. I'm going to come back, uh, do it with the different plates with and without foams, as well as with some different known switches so you guys can get a good idea of what this sounds like in real life. I, I won't be one to argue that, oh, aesthetics are just, you know, uh, fluff or, or whatever, though I probably am guilty of doing that in the past but I have to say that being able to I mean that's why they're called custom keyboards because you can go and take one piece and replace it with a new piece now I know that's on the bottom and I'm sorry but I'm I, I get frustrated when people are like what does it matter? It's on the bottom of the keyboard. It's like, uh. Some people just don't get it. I do. So, um, this is uh, definitely a solid keyboard. It is one that I, um, I'm, I plan to use. I'm actually it's so heavy I'm concerned that I might have to tighten my drawer I use uh, under the desk drawer um, and I'm gonna have to see which um, I'll probably use this one I haven't used this one in a while this is the uh, RP2040 or is it the RP2040? yeah the RP MCU um, runs ZMK I believe or Q mm. I forget what it runs. It's been a while since I've run this one, but it's got a 3D printed case, um, or one of a couple others. I got a Doyo actually. I could probably use. Anyway, <clears throat> coming back to this keyboard, I know that a couple of years ago this keyboard would have been priced at two, maybe three times the cost that this one is at right now. Um, for what it offers, for the number of different layouts, I mean, I can just go ahead and change this to a Desangin bottom row. No problem. I'm good to go. Um, for the weight, for the craftsmanship, for the ability to customize this to numerous different points. Um, I mean, I could buy separately the, the, the WKL, the Windows keyless top, and in and, and a different color. And I already have further customized my keyboard, and I could, you know, switch it around when I want. Um, for some people that only have one or two keyboards, I mean, that's probably a pretty cool thing. Um, I, I, I gotta say, I love that light effect. I like RGB, but I'm always using it in a room that's well lit, and I usually have to, like, peek. Unless, even if I'm using shine through keycaps, it's just the the light might come through, but the color, I'm like, what is it? So it's not like I notice it all that much. I also don't notice if it's missing. So I, I now want to get me a keycap set <laughs> that has a window. I believe there's one on KBD fans, or it's a JTK set. I think a couple of JTK sets have the um, the windowed caps lock. If there's any of you guys have one of those sets, 
I'd love it if you put it down in the comments below so I can get some ideas of what some some good sets that I can look at that have the windowed uh, caps locks key because I'd really I'd really like to um, to buy one and take advantage of that on this keyboard although I'm liking how art it looks on here though I'm also curious how a purple set would look on here and even a red set so I'm definitely going to change those out but first I'm going to do all the plates um, I There's nothing, the only gripe that I have about the keyboard, and again, that's, this is just, it's a silly gripe, is the JST cable is too short. That's all. But as long as you're careful, it works. So, other than that, I, I love the design. I mean, you see, that was... Like that, I was able to go into it and open it up. I mean, that's that's crazy. Now, not every keyboard do I just open up all the time, but if I'm sitting here modding it and I want to hear how it sounds, and I can just open it up and get in there and change things real quick. I mean, obviously, if I'm doing stuff with the plates, that's not going to be really quick. But it, <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cool. And I mean, it's not like it's going anywhere. It's locked in place. It takes some force to pull it off. And it also helps lend a clean look. Being as there's no screws, it gives it such a clean look. And I don't know. I'm just... I like it. This is probably... I know, it's gonna... It's probably my favorite keyboard that I have right now. <laughs> I mean, it is... TKL always has a place in my heart. It's one of the first formats that I went to. I got TKLs when they first came out. Um, and despite still doing a lot of programming, um, I, I was able to get an umpad as well, although the umpad doesn't match, but <clears throat> I kept that in a drawer and I only pulled it out when I went to do programming. I was just doing regular stuff. I didn't need the numpad. I mean, even if I was just entering, you know, a couple of values, I used the number row. It was fine. Um, if I wasn't doing database entry and I wasn't programming, it was fine. And it was for, for some time I was doing more managerial work and, and project management work than I was doing actual technical work so this helped me uh, this the TKL format helped me significantly because it gave me more room um, every inch of desk space was was important back then anyway um, but how solid it is how quick I could get in there how nice it sounds how many different sounds I'll be able to get out of it because of the plates that I have with me right now. Um, with the way it looks, with the way that the RGB is implemented, with the numerous layout options, I can go ISO if I want to. All right. I can do the split backspace, which I haven't done. I can do the split right shift or left shift, split backspace, split shift. Um, I'm probably going to move to the Sangin bottom row, obviously seeing since I can do that quite easy. Actually, let's do that right now. Oh no, I can't. Never mind. I'm like, yeah, I just uh, I got to I got to change out the um, the stabilizers. So um, I will have to do that when I come back to it. Anyway. This Gyrus 80 is just a lovely hunk of, I'm guessing with the keys and the switches, we were 1915 grams, so just 95 grams under 2 kilos, and I'm going to guess we're a little over 2 kilos now. 
with all the switches and the keycaps. About 300 grams more. That's what I meant to say. So we've definitely gone, we definitely made it over uh, two kilos by about 300 grams, or by about 200 grams, 300 grams over the stock weight of 1915 grams. So So there's only really a couple other TKLs that I'm interested to try, but having gotten this one, I gotta say, this is a, uh, I don't know how those other ones would uh, beat this out. I'm, I'm really just, I'm impressed. I like it. I like how it sounds. It has, it gives me the impression that it has the ability for many different sound signatures. It's just going to depend on the, the uh, foams that I end up using as well as the plate that I have loaded at the time. But these LTs that I have, it just feels feels and sounds nice it's a little scratchy but it's that I just I mean those are brand new uh, LTs that I just got from pulling keys so um, within a week or so of using them they'll be broken in that scratchiness will be gone and it'll just be this yeah the sound on this it's just And like I said, I'm not a crazy flexy guy. I probably, if I was, I would have just put in just the one um, barbell or column um, gasket per tab of the PCB so I could get super flex. But, but I will be trying it with different foams and without the foams as well. So we'll see how much flex we can get out of it. Right now it's a soft enough typing experience how would I describe it it's it's just enough resistance that so you know that you're actually pressing on something real but a little bit of give so that it soft it softens up the weight of the spring which I like a heavy weight but when I want to press I want it to press so because these are 65 gram springs I believe so I'm gonna go ahead and leave you with a sound test built as it's built right now I may just throw in a, a couple of switches in a few of the slots just to compare just real quick um, with this plate just so that you can get an idea of it um, because I I was sick for a few days um, kind of late on when I said I would get this done by um, and I want to go ahead and just get the initial impressions my review and the build out there and then like I said I will be coming back to this soon enough um, here in the next week or so because I want to as everybody's getting their um, orders I want to have little, uh, you know, demonstrations of the different plates as well as some mods. I'm definitely going to do the pet mod. Um, I may do the Tempest tape mod. I may try different foams, but like I said as well as no foams, and I'll try different switches. There have been some expensive keyboards that were not, in my opinion, and in a lot of people's opinion, worth, you know, how much they were price that but nowadays we are seeing a it's like a new day 
all of these great keyboards are coming out and in, even in the budget space or the you know in stock more mass produced um, keyboards you can get aluminum keyboard for fifty dollars you can get a decent three mode custom with a pc plate and and wireless um, with a knob for around 20 25 dollars gmk 67 um there's there's so many switches that i can't even keep up with them i mean i hear three four new switches every day and i'm like i've never heard of that what switch is that and i'm just like there's no way that i can keep up i have a whole bunch of switches i still have to review um but i've got my setup all done i um I'm going to get back to the rhythm. Uh, I like to do at least three to four videos a week. Um, keep myself busy and inform you guys. And I, I, there's a lot of mods that I've got. I've got very numerous pages of spreadsheets uh, with, um, with mods and keyboards that I want to come back to. So I will be coming back to this one. I've got a few more videos though that are coming up but i wanted to go ahead and get this out like i said i'll do uh sound test right now we've got the aluminum plate and i'll try out a few more switches just to switch it up pun intended until the next transmission keep calm and keyboard on